Hey guys, we are back with some more New Jersey Devils franchise mode, and as you can see, we are the Stanley Cup champions here in year number two. Uh, it was an absolutely phenomenal playoff run. I mean, we destroyed the Boston Bruins in a four-game sweep. We reverse swept the Buffalo Sabres in seven games. They had us up 3 nothing before... And then we just, the rest of the series was in our favor. 6-1 to one win, 6-1 to one win, 3-1 win, 3-2 win. And then the series against Columbus, that also went to 7. We won the first game, won the second game, lost the next two. Then we won game number 5, lost game number 6. So very much a seesaw kind of series. And then we win game 7, 2-1. And then we sweep the Nashville Predators. To win the Stanley Cup in a convincing fashion. So it took us four, then seven, then seven, then four. And I'm pretty convinced that, obviously, we should go into next season with relatively the same roster. So as a result of that, we are going to be extending Kyle Paul Mary. He's an 84 overall, currently 30 years of age. He's making 4.6 at the moment. I'll extend him for, I don't want to say three years, but yeah, we'll definitely go for two. We've seen how forwards can potentially drop off in this game, so uh, a two-year extension is about right for Paul Mary. Uh, he wants 4.9. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's about right, given that he's now a Stanley Cup champion. I'll offer him 4.75, just so it's a little bit of a raise from what he's currently making, but... I don't think we should go too much further with Paul Mary. So offer a contract, contract extension to him. And he's the only one who I believe I want to offer an extension to right away. I'll wait until the re-sign stage to re-sign guys like Simmons and Coleman. And as for goaltenders, I mean, Mackenzie Blackwood, he was not good this year, but he still does have potential and I guess it's for that reason that we're going to be re-signing him. But I would say it's definitely got to be another one-year deal for Mackenzie Blackwood, two years tops. Because he hasn't been the greatest, obviously, with the save percentage. And he still has Robin Leonard to lean on. And I, so I, I just really want to see one more year out of Blackwood before we make a final decision on what we're going to do with Blackwood. But if he doesn't grow at all, and if he doesn't make any progress in the actual season itself, this is probably going to be the last year for Blackwood to prove himself. So as we go into the stats for the playoffs, let's take a look at all of our players because obviously in the last one, we ended off with the Stanley Cup celebration, so we didn't get to this. Taylor Hall with 27 points, the MVP of the playoffs, understandably so. 12 goals and 15 assists in 22 games played. Gusev Point per game, 22 points in 22 games. P.K. Subban also made a case for potentially the Conn Smythe winner with 21 points in 22 games as a defenseman. Nico with 21 points, almost point per game as well. Jack Hughes with 17. Paul Mary with, 20, uh, with uh, 14. Simmons with 11. Severson with 9 as a forward. Coleman with 9. At, well, actually, Severson played half forward, half defense. Because, you know, with all the injuries, we had to move Severson back to uh, defense, especially when Tanev got injured. But still, you know, he played he played fairly well in both roles. We're keeping this team together for the most part. Blake Coleman with nine points. Zach Smith with eight points. He was clutch when he had to be. Uh, Jamnov with eight points. He was a surprise as well. Glad that he got on the board a few times there. Zajac with six. Brat with six. If this was Zajac's last year then I am super glad that he finally got to raise the Stanley Cup. He deserves it. Uh, Butcher with six points. Ty Smith with six points. He's got a future ahead of him, this kid. Uh, Pavel Zaka with six points. Tanev with five. Manson with three. Anderson with two. In 12 games, he did well. And uh, Miles Wood filled in for five games there with no points. And a goal, of course, he had Robin Leonard with a 935 save percentage. He also made a case to be the Smythe winner with that 935 save percentage. But it, it obviously went to Taylor Hall. But I would say, yeah, t two or three really good candidates for the Smythe other than Taylor Hall. 
because we just had a all-around group effort. Mackenzie Blackwood had to get in there for a little bit. Had an 833 save percentage in the time that he was in there lighting four goals. That was unfortunate. And Kyle Palmieri has decided to re-sign with our team. And the playoffs are complete. And your Stanley Cup champions are the New Jersey Devils. The Calder Cup goes to the Laval Rocket. So now the awards should be given out at this point. Yes, they are. So the Stanley Cup champions, obviously, your New Jersey Devils here in year number two. And the President's Trophy goes to the Colorado Avalanche. And it was obviously your Devils versus the Predators. And the individual awards, Art Ross goes to Nathan McKinnon. The Hart goes to McKinnon. The James Norris goes to Carlson. The Lady Bing goes to Carlson as well. The Calder goes to Ryan Merkley. And the Conn Smythe goes to, obviously, Mr. Taylor Hall, who we saw in the cutscene. Uh, Vesna goes to Andre Vasilevsky. The Jennings goes to Rask. The Masterton goes to Hedman. The Jack Adams Award goes to the Sharks coach, Wise. The Frank J. Selkie goes to Aze Kopitar. The Lindsay Award goes to McKinnon, and the Maurice Richard goes to McKinnon. So McKinnon takes home a lot of hardware, but he didn't take home the grand prize. We did that instead. And the draft lottery, Edmonton wins the draft lottery once again. <laughs> wow. And Vancouver goes up to number two. Pittsburgh, via the Senators, get up to number three. Arizona moves down to four, then Dallas, Montreal, L.A., Detroit, Carolina, Tampa Bay, the Islanders via the Golden Knights, then the Rangers, the Islanders again, Minnesota, and then the Islanders again through Washington. Luckily, we didn't have to be a part of that process this year because we were, in fact, the Stanley Cup champions. So, as we get into the retirements here, let's see who retired from the league. Maybe Travis Zajac, maybe Zach Smith. If both of them retired, then good luck to them in their retirement because... They obviously, both of them, brought us, or helped br bring us a Stanley Cup. So, around the league, Patrick Marlowe, uh, Marion Gabrick, Kunitz, Backes, Wah, Stepniak, Stafford, Callahan, MacArthur, Daly, Andy Green's retiring, New Jersey Devils legend, and I'm not even saying that as a joke, New Jersey Devils legend, for sure. He played so long here. He played, I believe, 14 <laughs> or so years, so good for him. Dennis Seidenberg, Patrick Eves, Steve Bernier, uh, New Jersey Devils legend in a different way that I won't get into. Uh, Kyle Quincy, Chris Thorburn, Cody McLeod. All right, so we're getting into the... And uh, Jonas Gustafson retires. He is the only notable for goaltenders. And Patrick Marlowe actually retires as a scout. And following coaches have retired from the league. Uh, so is there any Binghamton or Devils retirements? Yet there is. The Binghamton Devils, Jonathan Foss has retired. Do we have any New Jersey retirements? No, we do not. And we will now go to the draft class to do draft interviews. So we're obviously picking number 31. So you have a couple of good prospects who we already have fully scouted here in Thomas Sjostrom and Lucas Albets, uh, Albets, Albets Hauser, Albets Schauser <laughs> with the uh, good old German there. Plays like Zdeno Chara. Top four. Medium top four. He's a gem as well. Uh, defensive defenseman, it looks like. He's four years away from the NHL. Then you got Sjostrom, who could potentially be three years away from the NHL. Also plays like Chara. Six foot five. A medium top four defenseman. So, either of these guys, I don't think he could go, could go wrong with them. Uh, now, what about Richard Voracek? He looks more or less like the same kind of player. So, I think instead, I might scout... Or I might um, interview some of the guys that are down here, like maybe Petrolinen. It looks like you got a lot of defensive defensemen here. So what about Lidstrom? Ludwig Lindstrom. Or Lidstrom. He's got the ETA of potentially three years. He may be a low elite, maybe not. He's going 41. Are there any medium elites here that are going late? Oh, Caleb Wingles, number 77. Do we have a third round pick? I don't... We may not, actually. So we do have to keep our eye out for Caleb Wingles. We have to make sure to pick him up for sure. Since we have all the information on these two, let's get some information on Voracek, on Carlson, and maybe on Rod Rodney. That is an amazing name. That You know what? Let's interview him just for that name. That is incredible. We might be able to draft him as well if he drops to 31. You never know. So we'll interview him. So Rod Rodney, uh, well, let's check on his playing style first. Let's get his readiness. 
and he is a few seasons away from the NHL. That's fine. Let's talk about his strengths, and he thinks his strengths would be his skating. What about his weakness? He thinks that his physicality is not there on a nightly basis. So Rod Rodney, he is ranked 29th. His strengths are his skating, his weakness is his physicality, and his ETA four years away. Now let's try to get some information on Mikhail Carlson. Let's get his strengths and weaknesses first. His strength is, of course, his skating. What about his weakness? Uh, let me guess, physicality? Yep. <laughs> it's generally the same answer uh, for the most part with all these, most of these players. Let's get his NHL readiness. Uh, he thinks he needs at least a few seasons. All right, so he is three years away. And his strength is skating, his weakness is physicality. Now let's get some information on Richard Voracek. So first we'll go for his NHL ETA readiness. He thinks that he will need at least a few seasons before he is ready to play in the NHL. You know, just so we can mix it up here, let's talk about his personality. He says he doesn't tend to get very bent out of shape about anything and he's very loyal. I like that about him. I think I have a well-rounded personality. All right, now let's talk about his skills. Uh, let's get his strengths. Skating. Of course. <laughs> so Richard Voracek has a well-rounded personality. He's a strong skater, and he's about three years away from the NHL. So that is all the interviews that we can do. We can only do three interviews. We interviewed Rodney, Carlson, and Voracek, because we already have information on guys like Sostrom and Abeltshauser. Abeltshauser? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that, and I'm not even going to get into it unless we actually draft him. So now... We can go ahead and go to the draft. And I'm not worried about our cap situation, at least not right now, with the contracts of Travis Zajac and Zach Smith coming off the books because they're both making a lot more than they should have. So I think even if we re-sign them, we will be saving a minimum of 5 or $6 million. So I'm not worried. Let's go into the draft. We don't have anything to worry about here. Let's just uh, make the picks that we want. And we'll get on to the reset stage. So Rodney was taken by Nashville. He is a 60 overall. Let's see who we have available with our pick. There's Voracek. There's Sostrom. There's a Beltshauser. And there's other guys down here. We'll look at these three first. So Richard Voracek, we interviewed him. There's a very low chance that he could be a medium elite. He's three years away from the NHL. Thomas Sostrom, he's got that medium top four guaranteed. And is a defensive defenseman. And then... A Belshauser is basically the same thing, except he's maybe one more year away from the NHL than uh, Sjostrom is. So Voracek, Sjostrom, and a Belshauser are all basically the same player. They're all defensive defensemen, it looks like, because Voracek is also has a similar style to Zdeno Chara. All these guys are similar to Chara. It's just a matter of which one do we want here. So comparing Voracek and Sjostrom... They're the two who I'm debating between now because they are their NHL ETAs are at three years. And for a Belshauser, he has four years on his NHL ETA. So for me, it's either Voracek or uh, Sjostrom. Voracek has one goal, one assist. And Sjostrom has one goal, one assist. But Voracek is a plus four, so we will be taking him. And we'll hope we get lucky with the potential. And he is. And of course, we have to go all the way over here to see what he is. Of course, we don't know his potential because of the fog of war, but he is a 63 overall. So we'll know his potential maybe later. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and go into our next pick, which is, oh, 119. No, 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 no. You know what? No. Because remember, there was that medium elite goaltender going somewhere in the 70s. So I want to find a trade for a third round pick. So just to be safe, let's trade for Arizona's third round pick, which is the first pick in the third round. So on the trade block, they want a second Coleman and Smith for a third. No, thank you. Uh, or they could take Anderson, Coleman, and a fifth. I'm not willing to give up Coleman for sure. I might be able to give up Anderson. At the same time, though, he did pretty good in the regular season. Nine points in 19 games. You know what? Let's give Anderson the chance there in Arizona. I'm sure they would appreciate him. He just doesn't fit, really fit in on our roster at the moment. And we'll give them the fifth. Proposed trade. All right, they accepted it. So, uh, Anderson, hopefully hopefully you get the chance over there in Arizona to prove yourself. I don't think it was going to work out here in New Jersey. But he at least won the Stanley Cup with us. So, good for him. 
And, uh, you know what? Obviously, some change is going to happen. And for us, that change was necessary to get that third round pick, which will allow us to hopefully draft that medium elite goaltender, which we will simulate to right now. And we will, presuming he's still there, hopefully he's still there. If he's not, I might lose it. And he is. Good. So Caleb Wingles, uh, he did not have a good save percentage last year in just 16 games, but he is that medium elite goaltender. It's going to take him five years to get to the NHL apparently, but I'm willing to wait that long if it means having a very good goaltender later on in the GM mode in year number seven, eight, nine, ten. We will take Caleb Wingles. Welcome to the New Jersey Devils. He's a 47 overall, but he's a medium elite. And you know what? It's some trade value as well. Even if he doesn't pan out, we can use him in a trade that we may need his trade value in. So uh, that is a good, definitely a good trade uh, for a depth forward and a fifth round pick for a medium elite potential goaltender. I would definitely take that. So as we get further into the draft here, we're starting to see less and less good potentials here. There's not even any low elites left. There's Stanley Morales, who might be a low elite, but even if he is, he's got that five years ETA and he's 19. Yeah, you know what? No, he's 19. No, thanks. There is really not much to go off here. So I think we'll just be taking the highest ranked because this is just, yeah, the scouts really, really did not do a good job. <laughs> and I even set them out uh, as, as often as I, as often as I could. Yeah, we just need to upgrade our scouting team. The, that is the one area we are really lacking in right now is scouts. So we'll just take Matthew Rempe here. He is the highest ranked. And you know what? At this point, we may as well just send the entire draft. I don't normally do this, but there's just literally, there's nothing to go off of right now. So we'll just send the entire draft and that'll do it. So welcome to the New Jersey Devils, Voracek, Wingles, and then Rempe, Mackinen, Hedstrom, Nikolin, Jonas, and Martikainen. I definitely would have not have made all those picks. You know, again, there was nothing to go off of. So San Jose makes a trade, a second for a second and a third. So I'm guessing they were moving up. And then to Minnesota would be a second for Zucker and Hunt. So that's a pretty big trade. And then to Detroit would be a second round pick for Thornton and Abdelkader. And those were the only big trades that happened other than ours, of course. So we have three coaches whose contracts are expiring. They're all in the AHL. So we'll go to re-sign coaches here and uh, we'll see if they deserve the extension or not. I personally like our goaltending coach, Backer. He's got that A for teaching, so we'll re-sign him as our AHL goalie coach. We'll re-sign Thorson because he's got that B for teaching, A- minus for penalty kill, and all around pretty solid. He's good with defensemen. I do feel like we could find a better head coach for the AHL, though. Clayton Hines, he's got an A- minus for penalty kill, but that's a little redundant given that Thorson has that. Uh, a minus for penalty kill as well. Uh, why is it going to... I'm, I'm clicking on Thorson, but it keeps going to Hines. All right, there we go. Uh, so uh, he, he has that A minus for penalty kill as well. And he does... Hines does have a B minus for power play, bleh, power play. But again, I feel like we could just find a better head coach. And plus, the AHL team has been struggling lately. His record is 60, 81, and 11. I, I think it's best to move on. Now we have four scouts to re-sign. We will re-sign Demarchi and Demaris, but Kapratsev and Silvergaard are being fired because we need to upgrade our scouting staff badly, especially, particularly our, our amateur scouting staff. So we have signed Demarchi and Demaris, and we will let go of Kapratsev and Silvergaard. So John Hayden does not want to re-sign. We will release him. And as for other guys who don't want, do not want to re-sign, unfortunately, Zajac does not want to re-sign. We will go back after him in free agency without a doubt because he only wants, I believe, uh, less than a million. Yeah, he wants less than a million. So we'll re-sign him in free agency, but I'm not going to sign him for, you know, two mil or something like that. Definitely going to go back after him, releasing him for right now, though. We're also going to sign Michael Vukojevic because he has some promising potential and he's only 20 years of age. And he's a 76 overall. I think we'll re-sign Tennyson because he has some good chemistry with all of our defensive pairs. So we'll sign on to another year. Zach Smith, he brings some good depth to our bottom six. I think a $1.25 million deal for one year is the right idea for him. Now, Blake Coleman is back up to an 83 overall. The Revival Project worked. 
He was, remember, he was a 77 overall to start the season last year. He's now 83. So, <laughs> glad that we took that chance. And Wayne Simmons, 83 as well. Obviously, these two helped us win the Cup, so I wouldn't be opposed to bringing either of them back for another year. So, Coleman wants one year for 3.4. That is about right for him. I'll give him 3.25 for one year. Simmons wants three years. I'll give him... Yeah, I'm going to have to go one year for him just because of his potential. And I'll go 2.4. Backer is back with the Bingham to Devils. Thorson is not back. Demarchi's back. Demers is back. Smith is back. Merzlikens is back. Simmer. Coleman. Strite. Uh, Tennyson is not back. White is back. Cormier is back. Griffith is back. Quinn is back. Gross is back. Vukovic, Clark have also joined. We're going to release Tennyson since he, re since he rejected our offer. And as for the rest of these guys, I think we'll just sign them for our AHL squad. And Mackenzie Blackwood. So once again, I think one year is the right idea for him. We'll go for, <laughs> not eight years, we'll go for 1.8 for one year. And there you go. Everybody has re-signed. We are at 12.2 million in cap space still. Uh, not worried going into free agency. Obviously, we won the cup, so uh, we don't have to ta change too much. But obviously, if there's anywhere uh, that we could upgrade, potentially, then we'll do it. But nothing too crazy, because again, we have a winning recipe right here. And Thorson is still not back. So we are on July 1st now, and the first thing that we are going to do is go into the free agency screen and re-sign Travis Zajac, because he absolutely deserves to be coming back to this team since he didn't retire. And here he is. He is looking for $1.025 million for two years. I'll give you one year at $1.5. There you go. So now, including Zajac, at forward we have... Hall, Heischer, Hughes, Gusev, Bratt, Palmieri, Coleman, Simmons. That is nine right there, once again, including Zajac. Ten would be Boquist, so, okay, good, good. Boquist is NHL ready now, 81 overall. Pavel Zaka would be 11, 81 overall, and Smith, 12, 78 overall. Then Sini, Quinn, all those guys. And in the system, you have Bastion, Lundell, right, Lundell, is another guy who we have to keep an eye on. He might have a huge growth year because he, he was a 70 overall to start this year. Now he's a 76, and the offseason jump hasn't even happened yet. So we might see him grow up to about a 78, 79 overall, potentially. And he's already a fourth-line forward as a 76. So we could potentially see him in the NHL as well next year. Now, the one thing that we do have to worry about is Miles Wood. I'm not as confident with Miles Wood as I was with Blake Coleman in getting him back to where he would be. Because Wood plays a little differently than Coleman. He also simulated terribly defensively last year. I'm just not feeling it from Wood. So, and he's making a little too much money for a 76 overall. And we have our Stanley Cup winning roster. Wood, for the most part, was not a factor in it. So I think it would be beneficial to trade him. Get that little bit of extra cap space. And we'll see what's available in free agency. But once again, I don't think we mess with too much, right? We just get a few depth players here and there. And we move on to next season. So let me know who we should get out of this free agency, if anybody. I'll just scroll through it really quick here. So that you guys can see all the players that are available. And if we should get any of them. But other than that, uh, that this will be about it for this one. So let me know what you guys think. And I'll see you guys in the next one when we finish off the off season for year number two and move into year number three, as we call ourselves the reigning Stanley Cup champions.